tackle some of these uh, optimization questions. So when I'm working on a word problem or an application problem, I have this uh, rubric I've kind of put together. Five steps. So the first step, you can read these through. First one, what is the question? So in this particular answer, um, there's actually two, this particular question. There's two questions that they're asking me. One, for the largest possible area for this right triangle that they're going to specify. And the second, what are its dimensions? So I have two things that I'm going to be looking for, largest possible area, and then what are the, um, what are the dimensions? The second thing is, what will be the form of the answer, including units? So I come back to my problem here. Well, one I'm going to have, um, I'm going to find what is the area of the, uh, of the right triangle. Um, and that's going to be in, uh, well, we're doing, dealing with centimeters. The units are going to be centimeters squared. And then the next one is the dimensions. So that would be the sides. And those will be in just plain centimeters. So now I've kind of got my, uh, my units specified. Then the next step is to, is to draw a picture. I almost always find a picture to be extraordinarily helpful. So I'm going to draw a picture. So I'm going to have a triangle here. Let's make a right triangle. Doesn't really matter in this particular case whether it's to scale or anything, as long as I put in my sides and angles correctly. And I'm told that it has a hypotenuse of 5 centimeters. Um, here's my right angle. And I think that's all the information that I know about this thing. So my next step, number five, is to set up the equations and then try and solve this. Well, I'm looking, I can see that I'm looking for the area and I'm looking for the dimensions. And, um, well, if I'm going to find area, I know that area is equal to, of a, of a uh, right triangle, well, one, any triangle really, one half, base times height. Well, that poses a problem because I, I don't have either a base or a height. All I have is, is, is a hypotenuse. And really, to find the area here, what, I, what I'm thinking I want to do to find the maximum here is I want to find some kind of an equation um, for the area in either terms of base or height. I can't do it in terms of two variables, but if I do it in terms of one variable, I can certainly make a graph out of that because it would be area as a function of, say, base, or area as a function of, say, height. If I can do that, then I can graph it and I can find out where is the maximum. So my task is to get base and height somehow related to one another. And I can do that because I know the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And I know that that applies to this particular um, situation. Well, I mean, I, I think it applies to the situation. I can't think of any other way to do it. So I know that um, I'm going to change, I'm going to make my height my a, so I know that height squared plus b squared equals, well, 5 squared, so 25. Okay. So I know that um, my height squared is equal to 25 minus b squared. So I know that the height is equal to the square root of 25 minus b squared. So I've now determined the height in terms of the base. And I can go back to my um, area equation here. And I can say, well, now I know that area is equal to 1 half of the base times the square root of 25 minus the base squared. 
that's a really good thing because now I have my area is a function of the base. And this is the equation for it. So what I want to find is I want to find the derivative of the area. Because if I find the derivative of the area, I can set it equal to zero, and that'll be a critical point, and I'll see if I have a maximum, um, a maximum value. So in this particular uh, setup here, I have one half times b times 25 minus b squared. Well, I'm gonna, I'm just gonna rewrite that here. Okay, I, I want to make sure that I'm not, re, I'm not writing a prime. I'm rewriting my a. So I'm rewriting a, and that area is going to equal. Um, I'm going to go one half times. Um, times b times 25 minus b squared to the one half power. Now I can start working on the derivative. So a prime is equal to, well, I'm going to take my one half and pull it through the derivative. You know what? I'm going to do this down here a little bit lower so we can see it. I, I think I need more room. So a prime is equal to one half. I pulled that through the derivative. And I have a product. So I have u and v. So I know my product rule is uv plus uv. I put in my primes. So the derivative of u, which is, which is v, is simply 1. And that's times v which is 25 minus b squared to the one-half power. Plus, now I have u, which is my b, times v prime. Okay, this is going to be a little bit more complicated. It looks like it is one-half 25 minus b squared to the negative one-half. That's the outside. And now I have to do the inside here. That would be times 2b. Actually, I almost, I almost bombed LA right there. It's times negative 2b because there's this, there's this negative sign uh, right there. So all of that is in these brackets here. And let's see if I can't... Um, Simplify this a little bit, a little bit more. All right, let's uh, let's keep going with this. So that is equal to well, that this this piece right here. I'm going to distribute that, so it's going to be equal to 25 minus b squared to the one half power divided by two. Plus, well, actually, it's going to be minus because of this minus sign right there. And this 2 and that 1 half is, are going to cancel out. So I'm going to have um, b squared, b times b. So I have uh, b squared divided by... 2, which comes from over here, this 2 distributed over to here, 25 minus b squared to the 1 half power. Now, if that's a little bit confusing, just stop the video right now, go back, get a piece of scratch paper, work out the derivative, make sure that you understand where I'm coming from on this. So I want to combine these a little bit more because I'd like to have a little bit of a cleaner formula. So I see that I have a denominator of 2 for this fraction and 2, 25 minus b squared to the 1 half for that fraction. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this side here by 25 minus b squared to the 1 half on the top and 25 minus b squared to the one half on the bottom to get a common denominator. That's what I'm trying to do here. 
So if I do this multiplication out properly, when I multiply this times this, I have the same base, 25 minus b squared, and it's to the one-half power I'm multiplying them. So when you multiply, like if I multiply a to the one-half times a to the one-half, I add the exponents. So that would just equal a. So I'm going to go back here, and I'm going to see that this is equal to simply 25 minus b squared. And then I have minus b squared from the other piece over here. And that is all over the denominator of 2, 25 minus b squared to the 1 half power. And that is what a prime should be equal to. Actually, we can simplify it just a tiny bit more since I have two of these negative b squareds. It's 25 minus 2b squared divided by 2, 25 minus b squared to the 1 half power. So that's, that's my derivative here. And I need to find out the critical points. And if we remember, critical points are where the derivative is equal to 0 or the derivative does not exist. Now I'm looking at my derivative here, and I see that I have a variable in the denominator. I don't see any radicals. Oh, I even see a radical sign with an even index right there. Um, and so I need to figure out what is the domain of this derivative, because I can see that there are going to be places where the derivative does not exist. So I'm going to start with trying to find out, well, first off, what is going to make my denominator equal to 0? That's, that's the don't in the don't ride lines. So I have um, uh, my denominator is 2. 25 minus b squared to the 1 half power, and I want to find out what makes that not equal to 0. That can't be equal to 0. So I can divide both sides by 2, and I get 25 minus b squared to the 1 half cannot equal 0. And then I can square both sides, and I get 25 minus b squared itself cannot be equal to 0. So I get negative b squared cannot be equal to negative 25, or b squared cannot be equal to 25. So b cannot be equal to um, either plus or minus 5. And and the minus is really kind of irrelevant here because since I'm dealing with a, a spatial form, a triangle here, I really can't have a negative, um, a negative distance. So I'm pretty clear that b cannot be equal to 5. So that is, that is part of the domain of my derivative. The second part is that I do have a... Um, I do have a uh, radical sign with an even index, because this can be written as the square root of 25 minus b squared. So I am concerned about the radicand right here. So 25 minus b squared, 25 minus b squared has to be greater than or equal to 0. Well, let's see if we can't solve that. With solving any kind of, of, a, um, of, a, of, of an inequality like this, the way you have to do it is uh, set everything equal to, uh, greater than or equal to 0. So I did that, and now I'm going to factor this. So I have um, 5 plus b times 5 minus b has to be greater than or equal to 0. And so I know that my zeros would be at negative 5 and positive 5. So what I need to do is, if here's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 
one, two, three, four, five. This is positive five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. This is negative five. I need to set up intervals at negative five and positive five because those are the only places on any graph of this function where I might change from positive to negative, where I pass through zero. So I need to test some values. So I need to test, I'm going to start off by testing, let's go up a little bit here, get a little bit, there we go. I'm going to start out by testing um, what is going to be the value over in this area here, and I'll test negative six. So I have five plus negative six times five minus negative six. And this is going to give me a negative, and this is going to give me a positive. So over here, these values are going to be, they're going to be, they're going to be negative, they're going to be less than zero. So if they're, if they're less than zero, these are going to be out, out of my domain, because it has to be greater than or equal to zero. Let's erase that, I don't want to make it confusing. So now let's test something in this interval here. Let's test zero. So if I want to test zero, I'll do it right here. I would have five plus zero times five minus zero. Well, this is going to be a positive number. That's going to be a positive number. These are going to be positive, so these are in the domain. And then let's test one more over in this area here. Let's test positive six. So I would have five plus six times five minus six. That's going to be a positive number. That's going to be a negative number. These are negative. These are out of the domain. So the domain of this part of the of the um, of the derivative that where I'm testing this right here is negative five to five in brackets. But from doing it above, we know that b cannot be equal to five or negative five. So it's telling me that my domain of the derivative goes from zero, well actually, we'll, we'll put it here. It goes from negative five to positive five, not included. But since I'm only dealing with real positive numbers because it's a triangle, my domain goes from zero, which would be included, to positive five, which is, which is not included. And actually, as I'm thinking about it just a little bit more here, um, zero really can't even be a, a, a valid x value of this um, derivative or function because, again, I'm dealing with a triangle and I can't have one side of a zero length. So this is really the domain of my derivative, is zero to five. And actually, again, as I'm thinking about it, that kind of makes some sense because if I look at my triangle, again, my x values the ones that I'm not, I'm my unknown for height and base, well, they have to be greater than zero, otherwise I wouldn't have a triangle. And they couldn't be greater than five, because five is my hypotenuse, and that is, by definition, the largest side of a, of a, of a, of a right triangle. So let's go back over here to my derivative. And I want to find out where does that equal zero? Well, if I want to know where a fraction equals zero, I look to see where does the numerator equal zero. Because anything divided into zero is going to be zero. So my numerator is 25 minus 2b squared. 25 minus 2b squared. And I have to find out where that equals zero. I know it, it, it exists everywhere. So where does 25 minus 2b squared equals 0? Negative 2b squared equals negative 25. Um, b squared equals positive 25 divided by 2. b, taking the square root of both sides, is equal to 5 divided by radical 2. That is... 
my base is going to be 5 divided by the square root of 2. And if I find out then what is my height, well, a squared plus b squared equals c squared. a squared, let's change that to h squared. h squared plus 5 over radical 2 squared equals c squared, which is a hypotenuse, which is 25. So h squared plus 25 divided by 2 is equal to 25. h squared is equal to 25 minus 25 divided by 2, which is the same thing as 50 um, over 2 minus 25 over 2, which is also equal to 25 over 2. So when I take the square root of both sides, I get that the height is also equal to 5 over the square root of 2. And that is approximately equal to um, 3.53. And if I went over here and I graph my derivative, here's my derivative right here. And I want to see where my derivative is equal to 0. I go zoom 6. There's the graph of my derivative. And I want to see where, what is this point right here? Second calc zeros. My left bound is 0 is fine. My right bound, let's say 5, that's on the way on the other side. And I find out that in fact it is 3.53. So I am correct on where my derivative was equal to 0. And now that I know the dimensions, um, it should be easy to calculate the area.